Okay, so the Fronius Gen 24 hybrid inverter or battery ready inverter has finally hit the Australian market and here she is in all her glory. It's beautiful, isn't it? Looks like a Macca's speaker box complete with the credit card facility. I'm loving it. So uh, I got six months ago or so, I got an early model Fronius Gen 24 and I've been running it down in my showroom uh, for the last six months and testing it and I wrote a um, fairly extensive review blog on it. Uh, there'll be links to that below, but in this video, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of six things that I love about the Fronius Gen 24 and three things that I hate about the Fronius Gen 24. Uh, I can't say hate about Fronius. Can I? It's sort of a little bit off brand. No, okay, we'll go on. Yeah, sure. So maybe three things that I love less about the Fronius Gen 24. Now, the first question that you'll be asking is, uh, are batteries worth it yet? Since we're talking about a battery ready inverter, uh, if you're asking that from a financial perspective, no, batteries aren't ready. At least they're not ready in Queensland. They don't make any economical sense if you're looking for a return on your investment. Maybe in other states they do, if you've got massive rebates on batteries or you've got an incredibly high feed-in tariff. Uh, or low feed-in tariff and high uh, usage tariff, then maybe batteries make it worthwhile for you. Give me some notes and some calculations down below if batteries are viable for you. Uh, but are they worth it from an uh, environmental point of view? And yes, of course they're worth it. We are going to need a transition into a renewable energy economy and bringing in batteries is a large part of that. So if you're doing that and purchasing a battery for environmental reasons, then well, you know, the environment told me to say thanks. And if you're buying a battery uh, purely for backup, let's say you've got an unstable grid and you don't like having blackouts all the time, or even if you think 10 or 15 grand, heck, that's worth it so that I never have a blackout in the next 10 or 20 years, then batteries are a great idea, and especially the Fronius Gen 24, which I'll get into later, why it's probably the pick that you might want to go with. But let's get into the uh, six things that I love about the Gen 24. And the first thing relates to batteries. Well, it relates to not actually having a battery. It's batteryless backup, I call it, or Fronius call it PV point. So you can have power in a blackout without having a battery. Uh, PV point, they call it that basically. It's like a, a power point, but it's not PV stands for solar. So you've got a solar point. We literally install a power point next to your inverter or near your inverter. Uh, and that power point will not operate when the sun is shining. You won't be able to use it to plug uh, in uh, something in the garage or anything like that when the sun is shining. Um, but when, the, when you, you're in a blackout situation, all of the power in your house will go off, your fridge will go off, your lights will go off, but this power point will then come on. Uh, this PV point will then come on and you'll be able to run an extension lead out from the power point out into your um, your fridge and your freezer or your toaster or your kettle to make some lunch or or you know charge your mobile, mobile phones or whatever you want to do it will give you three kilowatts of power which is quite a lot of power you'll be able to run a toaster and your freezer and your telly at the same time no problems at all uh, and but it will only work when the sun is out so you won't get three kilowatts of power at seven o'clock in the morning but you will probably from ten o'clock depending on on uh, how much how many panels you've got on your roof um, and and at night time it won't work at all. It's kind of a halfway to being a blackout proof and it's not a bad idea for the extra grand or two that you'll spend on a Gen 24 compared to another like just say a standard Fronius inverter. It, it probably is worth it getting you halfway there and then you can wait for a couple of years um, until batteries hopefully come down in price and you fork out your 10 or 15 grand to get yourself a, a solid battery a solution. Okay, so that's the first thing that I love about the Gen 24. The second thing is a thing that they call multi-flow technology. What does that mean? To be honest, it's a little bit of marketing talk and what it really means is it just works properly. Uh, so the first thing that it does, for example, is in a blackout situation, let's say you've got 10 kilowatt hours of power in the battery that you've bought and it starts depleting, well, the panels will keep on charging that battery during the day and keep on topping up that power. You would have thought that that would have been a fairly obvious thing, but some solutions, some battery solutions and hybrid inverter solutions will not do that. Now, the second thing that it can do is AC coupling. 
into this DC coupled battery. Now let me explain that. If you've got, let's say you've got a five kilowatt uh, SMA system or a different brand altogether of a solar system and it's a fairly decent system, you don't want to rip it off your roof, but you want to put more panels on your roof and you want to put a battery or a battery ready inverter like the Gen 24. Well, you can leave that decent system, five kilowatt system on your roof. And let's say you put another 10 kilowatts of panels and this and, and, and the Gen 24 inverter. Uh, and imagine if that you were still sending power back to the grid from your old system. Well, you can actually effectively plug your old SMA inverter into the Gen 24 battery charger and use the excess power from that to charge your battery. Um, it isn't exactly plugging it in, we're just doing this with smarts by monitoring. When your, when your system, any of your power gets sent back to the grid, the Fronia system will recognize that and will start charging the power, uh, the battery with that excess power. So a pretty cool feature if you're in that kind of unique situation. <clears throat> but multi-flow technology, in short, that, that's marketing speak for it works and it works really well. It does everything that you would expect a, um, a battery ready inverter or a hybrid inverter to do. Okay, the third thing that I'm really loving about the Fronius Gen 24 is the cooling system. And Fronius have always been ahead of the game, ahead of everyone else with the cooling system. They've had um, two external fans quite often on their inverters um, that, that really work really well on cooling, better than any other inverter that I know. The Gen 24 has stepped up, up a notch and no, that's not a McDonald's speaker box out the front. Uh, that is an intake for a fan and um, First, let me point out that the Gen 24, like I was mentioning before, it works much, much harder than a standard inverter. Um, a standard inverter peaks its, its, um, its work at lunchtime when the sun is producing most power. But the Gen 24, let's say you get to five o'clock in the afternoon, the sun's going down, but you get home and, you, and you're, you're turning on all the power, well, that has to keep on working and discharging the battery all night as well. So because it's working so much harder and so much longer, Cooling is just even more important than it was before. Um, and so the Gen 24 has this, <coughs> this massive fan inside and that's drawing air in through that speaker box out the front and then dispersing it over these fins that we have on the heat sink. Uh, and it, it is just obviously a, a, a far superior cooling system to any other hybrid inverter or any other inverter that I've seen out on the market. Um, and it's re really important to keep those electronics cool, first for longevity and also for efficiency. And it's probably one of the reasons that Fronius have won all of these awards. There's a lot to do with their cooling systems. They've just gone back to first principles of engineering, redesigned the inverter, thought how are we gonna make this cool efficiently and, and not have heat pumping out in all the wrong directions. And this is what they came up with. And I think it's a fantastic design, unlike anything that we've seen before. Now that brings us on to the fourth thing that I love, which is totally related about uh, the fan of the inverter. And now that's the entire build. And you can see this, this is the complete internal chassis. Obviously there is a, a back on here normally and then a back plate as well. Um, and they've reduced the electrolytic capacitors, which is a good thing. Elect electrolytics are what fail. And also, incidentally, that's what really requires cooling so that they last longer. So they've reduced the number of those. Um, the, this is all part of the heat, heat sink, which has our inductor coils um, sitting up inside and how they've separated those se separately, all part of that massive uh, uh, alloy heat sink that attaches to the front, which is cooled ridiculously well. Just the fact that they've oversized so I haven't tried to cram this into some little form factor, but there's heaps of room there for, for air to circulate with these two extra fans. These, these little tiny internal fans that we have here is normally what you, um, you only have one of those on an inverter and you don't have that uh, external cooling system. Um, if we swing her around again to the front, We've got these, um, that's a data manager card which comes separate so that keeps all your data if we have to replace the system. Um, but your spring connected terminals here uh, are just gonna make it so much easier for the installer but it's all, also going to reduce uh, the chance of any kind of poor terminal uh, connection there. Um, back entry installers are gonna love that. If you want a neat install, instead of having conduits coming down from underneath your inverter, you're now allowed to drill back uh, into the back of the inverter, into your block wall, and then having your conduits coming up. 
That can't happen in all systems, but if you've got, if that's where you're mounting your inverter in a place that we can do that, then it's going to work really well with this inverter. It's just everything about it. There's a DC switch on the front. The touch sensor on the front I've found works really well and the way that that reconnects to Wi-Fi uh, is a really good feature of the Gen 24 as well. I've pulled a lot of inverters apart in my time and uh, this inverter here is just head and shoulders above any other for the build quality. I'm loving it. Now what I mentioned, your data manager card down here and when you put the cover on there you've got these little lights and a little touch sensor that you just tap your finger over and that's what uh, controls reconnecting it to Wi-Fi or programming the inverter and you've just got a couple of lights here that tell you it's running. They don't have a screen on the inverter, I used to complain a lot about that. Uh, Fran has pointed out to me I think a good point that if you've got a hybrid inverter, the uh, inverter that's doing all the work of charging a battery, you really want to have decent monitoring, you really want this system connected to the internet so that you can have the proper, uh, the real McCoy of monitoring. Uh, and Grandma, if, um, if you can't do that, then probably don't buy yourself a hybrid inverter. But anyway, once you have it connected to the internet, that brings me to the next point that I love about the Gen 24, and that is the Fronius monitoring platform called SolarWeb. Uh, no, now, that's not unique to the Gen 24 inverter. Uh, but I've done this um, video on how to use the Fronius Solar Web monitoring. A link will come here. I really love it. It's sometimes glitchy and we find sometimes it goes down and you know with the server we've got server issues or data is not displayed properly. It doesn't happen too much. It happens enough to annoy installers from time to time. Um, but it's a really, really good system. It's really good for uh, visual for the customer, for the end user. Uh, and it is really in-depth for the installer or the technician that's trying to fight fault finder system uh, as well. So I'm really loving uh, Fronius Solar Web. They're coming out with a new app soon uh, that I've just uh, checked the beta testing for and it is a really, really nice app and a really user-friendly interface on that as well. Now that was the fifth thing that I love about the Fronius Gen 24. Let's move on to the sixth thing that I love about it. It's just the size options that you get with it. Now. Hybrid inverters are not a one size fits all. It, it really depends on your load profile, how much power you're using at night, how much power you're using the day, during the day and how many solar panels can you fit on the roof. And it's a fairly complicated um, thing to work out and to do properly and not to waste money on a battery that you're never going to use or not to undersize the battery so that it doesn't really do the job of storing your excess power or keeping, keeping you running through the night or through a blackout. But Fronius have got a range any, anywhere from a four kilowatt single phase inverter right up to your 10 kilowatt three, three phase inverters. And as far as batteries go, you have an option stackable anywhere from six kilowatts right up to 22 kilowatt hours of storage. So there's a vast range. So when we come to design a system, we've got a, we've got a heap of different options that we can work with. And that flexibility that Fronius have allowed us with this Gen 24 range is going to make it really easy uh, to design a system that's going to be perfect for your needs. So that's the six things that I love about the Fronius Gen 24, but it leads me on when we're talking about batteries to the one thing that I hate the most about the Fronius Gen 24, and it is the battery. Uh, it's not because it's a Fronius battery. Fronius no longer are doing their Fronius battery. It's the BYD battery that they've chosen. And there's nothing wrong with the BYD battery in itself. It looks like a great solution to me from a really great company. Um, and it's, it's got a massive backing. They've got a really good presence in Australia. They've already got um, uh, really good reviews for the way they're handling warranties and handling uh, the industry. But what I hate about it is it's just because it's not a Fronius battery. And the reason it's not just because I'm such a Fronius fanboy, it's because if you have have a problem down the track uh, with the BYD battery, and, and is it the Fronius inverter's fault or is it the battery's fault that the battery is not char uh, charging? And I don't want to be in the middle of a finger pointing war of Fronius saying, oh, it's the battery's fault and BYD saying it's the inverter's fault and me and you as the customer are left out hanging uh, to dry. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm not as concerned with that as Fronius as I have been in the past with other inverters. Fronius are ridiculously conservative as a company. They've taken a long time to bring out this Gen 24. They've been working for a long time with BYD and uh, their counterparts are working in China and in Austria 
to make sure that this um, this marriage, I guess, of battery and inverter are going to work really well. And um, you know, I, I do trust both as a company um, to be able to work together and honour warranty issues should they come out in the next 10 years. But in saying that, it still would have been better Fronius if you gave us a Fronius battery. Uh, the second thing that I'm not loving about the Fronius Gen 24, and this isn't for all situations, uh, but it, it is the input current. On one of the trackers, they've given us a big 22 or 25 inputs, depending on the inverter. On the other one, they've just given us, given us 12.5 amps. It means something to installers uh, for, uh, for the homeowner. Basically, it means if you've got a house and say you've got 16 panels, this is one example, 16 panels on the east and 16 panels on the west and you want to put that into your Fronius 10 kilowatt SIMO. Uh, the input uh, current limitation on that will not allow you to go 16 and 16 um, uh, because of the tracker, the 12.5 amp input will not allow us to parallel eight and eight into that tracker. That's a lot of maybe gibberish for the homeowner, but basically it means that there are design limitations with the 10 kilowatt uh, SIMO inverter in particular, uh, possibly even their 8 kilowatt inverters depending on the roof that we're working with. Um, but that's okay, we can work around those designs and uh, offer you another inverter if that's not the best solution for your roof. And the third thing that I'm hating about the Fronius Gen 24, and to be honest with you, I'm a little bit nitpicking on this, it's the change over time, um, 90 second change over time. So if you have a blackout, you won't have power, Fronius say, for up to 90 seconds. In my testing, it was only about 40 or 45 seconds, the change over time, so we were only without power for about 40 or 45 seconds. Both the SunGrow and the Tesla are not uh, UPS, so they are not an uninterrupted power supply, but it seems like that. The lights don't even flicker uh, in the changeover from being on grid to off grid. Um, but however, we did a test with the SunGrow and uh, SunGrow hybrid inverter, and it is enough. The changeover time won't make your lights flicker, but it will make your computer crash. But the Gen 24, you're gonna to have to wait a full 40 seconds or 120 seconds or whatever it is. And you know, if this is a discretionary spend that you're spending on an inverter and a battery that you never particularly needed anyway, it wasn't gonna save you a whole heap of money, you just wanted just the latest toy, well, maybe that's something that's gonna annoy you. I think it's a little bit nitpicky. I'm not too excited about it myself. Give me some comments on the notes below. Do you agree or disagree with some of my points? Is there other battery ready inverters out there that you think are better than the Gen 24? To be honest, I'm scratching to find one myself. And don't remember, if you want some more uh, content like this, subscribe down below and, and push that notification bell and give us a thumbs up for this video if you've appreciated the review that I've done here. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.